First of all, I'd like to salute the uh, participants of the Fort Ross Dialogue of 2016. I have always thought that this dialogue is a rather new development mm -hmm. in dialogue between the civil societies of two countries, and it certainly has a long, long future. I'm sure that it can contribute to bettering relations and bettering understanding between two of our great nations. What is also very welcome uh, is uh, participation of a lot of uh, people of younger generation because it's for them to uh, manage their countries and their future and the future relations between Russia and the United States. I have to admit that today they are not in the best shape, to put it diplomatically. But at the same time, one has to remember that there are a lot of challenges in the world that both Russia and the United States share, where they have uh, very similar interests. And I would say that if you throw a list of things that unite us versus the list of things that put us apart, the first would be much longer and most probably significantly more important. So irrespective of the difficulties of nowadays that we have between our two countries, a somewhat uh, disrupted uh, uh, dialogue uh, on a number of uh, important issues between our two countries. I'm still of the view that uh, the necessity will bring us together. And uh, we, the two biggest uh, nuclear weapon states in the world, do carry special responsibility for maintaining the uh, uh, world stability and we are bound to work together on the biggest challenges to mankind and uh, to some uh, particular regional stability issues. Uh, your dialogue has always traditionally uh, been focusing on the economic side of our relations and it's still important. Even with somewhat uh, reduced dialogue on political level between our two countries and some misunderstanding arising in a number of approaches to regional issues in the world. Uh, the uh, economic relations uh, are still continuing. Uh, however, the uh, overall uh, rate of, uh, rather the volume of uh, trade has dropped somewhat. But what we see happening is that all the major companies of the United States working in Russia are planning to continue to be uh, in uh, my country. And I would like to underline they are welcome participants in the Russian market. At the same time, we also saw uh, during last year a somewhat increase in mutual investment, including investment by Russian private capital in the United States. And we consider it to be a healthy uh, development, and I hope uh, it's a good uh, signal that irrespective of difficulties of this particular period, uh, there are things that are long-term, and these things that are long-term can be pos uh, positive, and they will certainly help to restore normalcy in our relations and to bring more cooperation. You are having your dialogue on the west coast of the United States. That means uh, in the Pacific area. And one has to remember that uh, Russia and the United States are the closest neighbors, except certainly for Canada and Mexico for the United States. And we are neighboring closely exactly in the Pacific. I think that the current level of interaction between our societies over the Pacific or uh, programs uh, that are focusing on something that we share, the environment in Pacific, so far have been minuscule and have to be uh, expanded. And I think your pivot to Asia, that means in large to larger extent to Pacific and our increased interest in Far East and Russia a good well for increased uh, positive interaction between our scientists, between our um, uh, business people, between educators, between students. 
And I would say that the opportunities are immense and both countries stand to benefit from that. I would un underline that with current uh, focus uh, in the Russian government on helping to develop the uh, Far East of uh, my country. We saw a significant investment in this region. Uh, only last year it was about $15 billion. And uh, there are about 300 major projects that have been launched and actively pursued there. And uh, we saw uh, quite uh, significant uh, development. I'll give you one uh, a figure only. Uh, during last year, we saw increase in industrial uh, production in the Far East by 5%. Maybe in the past it wouldn't be that surprising a figure. Currently, on the backdrop of the rather modest uh, growth rates in many countries, including mine, and by the way, including the United States, 5% is something. And um, I hope it's just the beginning. And I can assure you that our interest in our own Pacific is going to increase further. And uh, I would like to also underline that it's a huge opportunity for business circles of both countries to work together in an area that, by and large, is so close to both countries. Uh, we certainly uh, uh, understand that we live in an area that we share in the Pacific. And uh, there are a lot of things that are important to you and to us in uh, environmental development, in marine preservation, in uh, watching the Pacific per se. And uh, we in Russia, in the Far East, have established a, a new scientific and educational cluster in the Far East University, which is pretty uh, ambitious project because uh, we have started with a university that initially was 2.5 thousand students uh, only, but it's expanding and moreover we are building a scientific cluster around it that would be promoting research development uh, and also startups. And uh, we uh, are absolutely sure that as a result of it, there will be burgeoning uh, opportunities for working uh, on issues uh, that are focused on Pacific. And once again, I want to repeat it, it's something that we share, the area that we share. We, by the way, are interested in seeing more scientists and students also coming to us and uh, working with us, studying with us, and also uh, learning to work with us. And I think that that kind of exchanges would be enriching both the United States and Russia. So, summing up my uh, very brief uh, uh, appeal to you to focus on what unites us, I'd like uh, to wish you all the best in your discussions. They're important in their own right. And they are also important because they preserve ability of our two people to talk on issues that are important to both countries, to find ways on how to advance our respective interests in a way that would be promoting uh, cooperation rather than misunderstanding. And I'd like to thank once again everybody who has made so much in order to make this dialogue possible, including the sponsors that do help a lot for so many years, and I hope the sponsorship is going to continue. All the best. I hope next time I will have a chance to be with you for further discussions on the issues that are important to you and to us. Thank you.